Thanks for staying with us as we talk about the ongoing fight for the Equal Rights Amendment. My next guests are keeping the pressure on. Carol Jenkins is a familiar face the award-winning veteran television journalist and now co-president and CEO of the ERA Coalition. And Carol Robles Ramon is the general counsel and dean of faculty at Hunter College. She is the former head of the ERA Coalition. Ladies, thank you for being here as we wrap up Women's History Month. And I must yep. thank you, especially <laughs> Carol yep. Jenkins, you are an inspiration to so many women in broadcasting, myself included. Oh, well, thank you. A thank bright you. beacon and a trailblazer. Well, I celebrate your success. You are just fabulous. So every time I look at you, I said, I knew her when. <laughs> She was like 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you call us your babies. Why, right? Yes, you're my babies, oh, both of you. you yeah, know, sure. <laughs> Carol, I know you, you. You have known Carol Jenkins for a long time. Car I met Carol Jenkins when I was in high school. <laughs> yeah. And Carol was somebody who gave me such incredible advice. Yeah. And she didn't remember it. She didn't. Right? We didn't see each other for like a couple of years later. Um, when I was deputy mayor of the city yeah. of New York, and so I, I went up and I reminded her, and so she turned around and she said to everybody, "I take full credit." Full yeah, credit. yeah, 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 yeah. Full credit for both of you. Okay, well, I'm it's an honor to, be to have here. you here, and we are Thank talking you. about the ERA. And let's first get right down to the definition of what the ERA means: equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. You. Yeah. Doesn't Ms. that doesn't sound that, beautiful? Doesn't yes. that sound wonderful? <laughs> Sounds wonderful, but <laughs> we do not have an amendment ratified to make it an, a true amendment. Where do we stand now? Well, this was a concept that was created by Alice Paul in 1923. So we are some years uh, beyond that, almost a century that we've spent over those simple words trying to get that into the Constitution. When the Constitution was written by those uh, white slave-owning men, uh, people uh, of color, women, uh, a whole bunch of us were not thought of, not only not included. Uh, in the 1970s and 80s, we had a great push forward. We got Congress to approve it. We got as far as 35 states ratifying it. And then it just went away. And then in 2017, because of a black woman state senator named Pat Spearman in Nevada, mm. she got Nevada to pass the Equal Rights Amendment, to ratify it. And everybody looked around and said, does that count? And our lawyers said, yes, it does. And Illinois followed, and now we came very, very close in, uh, in Virginia. We need 38 states to ratify. I say we got as far as 37 and a half because the Senate passed it and the House rejected it. So we need that 38th state and we need removal of the deadline in Congress and those yeah. two things will get us close to the ERA. We're a heartbeat away. A heartbeat. Yeah, Ms. Robles Roman, you're at Hunter College. Yes. A, a beacon of education, especially for women and of civil rights and women's rights. And led by a woman. And led by a woman, absolutely. What are students telling you? Some of them say, well, why do we need this? I understand. It sounds old fashioned. What are they saying to you? Well, you know, a lot of students, frankly, hadn't heard of the ERA. So it's not so much an issue of why do we need it, it's like, what is that? Right. Mm. And so what we have done over the years is tell people what is the ERA. Right. You know, we've coined the phrase, it's a new era for the ERA. And when we sit down and we read them, those three lines, right. they sit transfixed. And do you know what they say? What? I thought that passed. Mm. A lot of people think. Most right? people think it actually passed. So the ERA yeah. Coalition actually did a poll in 2016. 80% mm -hmm. of Americans polled thought there was an ERA. Then when they did the second half of the poll, 94% supported passage of the ERA. Right. So, so young people today, you know, and, and Hunter has been sort of a, a groundswell of sure, support sure. where we do an ERA campus day every year, which is actually going to be coming up soon. Yes, and I'm going right. to talk about that later oh, in the show. Ms. Jenkins, Jenkins, you've been working so hard for this. Why is it so difficult, especially in 2019? Well, I think the, um, the, the problem of not knowing about it is the first thing. I, I, I want to say that recently I read the very first article that was written about 
the ERA recently that actually was joyful because most stories are, oh, these women have been working so hard. It's a labor of, it's a, a labor of failure, you know? Um, this article in Refinery29 where a young reporter said, we are the, you know, the, uh, the, the phoenix that, you know, keeps rising. If you think that you are going to put the women and the men who are working on the ERA down, this is not going to happen, you're absolutely wrong. So I think that what we have to focus on is the fact that we are so close. In Virginia, we lost by one vote. One vote. And that was a committee men who refused to let it come to the floor, as he had done many years before. Uh, and he held up the equal rights of 166 million women in America. Wow. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the role of women of color uh. in this push. That's very important. Time for a break. In Focus continues right after this. And now, a special Women's History Month flashback from our New York One archives. November 24th, 2015, nearly four years ago. President Obama posthumously awards the Presidential Medal of Freedom to a New York City icon, Shirley Chisholm. There are people in our country's history who don't look left or right, they just look straight ahead. And Shirley Chisholm was one of those people. She was the original disruptor. How tough, but we know you have the courage, the balls, the audacity to shake the system up within the system. You probably know her as the first African-American woman elected to Congress in 1968, where she served her Brooklyn district for seven terms and took no prisoners. The hour has come in America when all of us in this room can no longer be the passive recipients of whatever the politics of a nation may decree for us as citizens within this realm. You may also know her as the first black candidate for president from a major party at a time when few believed it was even possible. I could serve as president of this country, believe it or not. Well, I've raised my question. That's what you're accounting for. Let me go back. That's why right I'm here. running. But she was also the first woman to seek the presidential nomination from the Democratic Party and a tireless fighter for women's rights. Politicians come out from every corner to get the most important thing you have your vote. Why is it that it has to always be white males, white males? She was one of the founders of NOW, the National Organization for Women, along with legends like Betty Friedan. She also helped create the National Women's Political Caucus and she fought hard for programs designed to help women, especially moms, in need. Shirley Chisholm would lose her run for the presidency, but she never gave up the fight, and she's still remembered today. In 2014, she was honored with her own postage stamp. Last year, exactly 50 years after her historic election to Congress, she won another popular vote to have her very own statue at an entrance to Brooklyn's Prospect Park. A black woman who carved a path for herself in public life when women, especially women of color, were expected to sit down and be quiet. We're back with our guests talking about the ongoing push for the Equal Rights Amendment. Ms. Jenkins, are women of color adequately represented in this conversation? Well, I would say that we are in the forefront. We would not have all of this movement uh, in the current ERA uh, uh, search if it were not for women of color. Uh, I mentioned Pat Spearman from Nevada in Illinois, the next state. Uh, it was Juliana Stratton, who's now the lieutenant governor there, who's impassioned plea on the floor there, passed the, uh, the ERA bill there. In Virginia, Jennifer Carroll Foy, a delegate, was the chief sponsor. Everywhere uh, you look in this movement, women of color, black women, Latina women, are present and dr the driving force, which is probably why it's going to be so successful. <laughs> we, are, we are carrying that ball forward. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, I just, I cannot say enough how uh, gratifying that is because I remember the last time around, as does Carol, although she was a lot younger than her, friend, <laughs> her, in, the, in, her in the school books then, uh, but where the women of color were present but were not acknowledged, and I think that that is a huge difference now. Right. And Ms. Robles-Roman, let's talk about what's happening at Hunter in the classroom. 
they're, they're going even further by educating the new generation. That's absolutely right. We have uh, a number of terrific programs. For example, um, our Roosevelt House Human Rights Clinic, um, one of our colleagues, Jessica Newworth, is one of the directors there. And she is just bringing this incredible uni focus on the ERA, not just at the national level here in the United States, but internationally. 179 countries around the world actually have an ERA type of position in their constitution, and guess which one doesn't? Ours. Right. Um, and so she does this incredible job of bringing the message to our students in, in such an incredible way. I had an opportunity to uh, teach one of her classes, mm -hmm. and the students were like sponges. And, and then thereafter, after we taught the class, uh, Congressman Nadler was coming in to, to, to speak. And each one of them asked, like, a super poised women's equality, ERA, you know, when are we having it? How are you voting? <laughs> question. And it was so incredible to see that, number one, that Hunter was a part of that, uh, that Professor Newworth was the one who kind of put the conversation in place. And, and frankly, the Congressman Nadler came and, right. and engaged our students at such a sophisticated level. Wow. We wow. should say that Jessica is the founder of yes. the ERA Coalition yeah, and runs the human rights program now at, uh, at Hunter. At Hunter. And, but, you know, there are some people who are saying, listen, it's 2019, let's make it a big tent. Let's include LGBTQ rights. Let's include people with disabilities. What's your take on that? Well, at the uh, ERA Coalition, we for many years have been working on a wider Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, it's called ACE, uh, and Amendment for uh, Constitutional Equality. Uh, we believe that, there, that that's the next step. We're so close to the, to the old, I don't want to call it the old ERA, we're the, almost there. We're putting a great deal of energy in that, but the next step is what do we do about everyone else that was left sure. out of the Constitution? Sure. And we've got, we've got the amendment for you, and, we, and hopefully that will be the next rollout, right after we pass this ERA, you know, in the next year or so. January, we could do it. And then we then bring everyone else in under that big, big tent. Yeah, are you hopeful that this will happen? As a former deputy mayor, as someone that's worked in politics, public and private life, are you hopeful that... We are a heartbeat away. And I'm extremely hopeful. I think that the biggest problem that we had in the last 20 years was disinformation and misinformation. Mm -hmm. And I think we've come a long way in terms of really taking care of that issue. And people are asking for it. And they're almost demanding it. And we have mm -hmm. the, the fact that, I mean, just think about this, that after, what is, was it a 20 year hiatus, out of the blue, an African-American woman stands up and says, you know what? Nevada is going to be passing the ERA. <laughs> and she did. Um, and then a year later, Illinois did the same thing. What's the point I, I want to talk about the Equal Rights Amendment as a family-focused, mother-focused effort? Uh, when I travel the country, and I do a lot of it now, someone asked me recently, what's the prevailing thing that you come back with? And I say, it's poverty, it's hunger. Mm. Everywhere I go, it's there, and it's women trying to raise their families, and they can't because of the discrepancy in pay. In North Carolina, where we just were working on the ERA, if they paid women the same thing they paid men, they they would add 15.3 billion dollars to their GDP and they would cut poverty in half. So I think looking at the kinds of discrepancies between what women are able to do and get and others, uh, we just have to have this amendment to level the playing field. Once and for all. Once and for all. Thank you both. The two carols. <laughs> I want to have you both back Thank when you. this sure. is a done Thank deal. You. Next Great. week. Same, uh, same yeah. time. <laughs> Let us hope. Okay. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. When we come back, taking the fight for equality to a new generation of activists. That's next in our final focus. In our final focus, when a battle has been raging for nearly a century, advocates say it's important to keep engaging students. And that's exactly what the ERA Coalition is doing, taking the case from the state houses and the halls of Congress to college campuses. Monday, April 15th, is the third annual Campus ERA Day. It started with just two schools, 
This year, 19 colleges are taking part. Here in the city, it'll be held at Hunter College's Roosevelt House. And the speakers read like a who's who of the women's movement. Carol Jenkins, you saw her on the show just moments ago. Actress and activist Patricia Arquette and the legendary Gloria Steinem. The event is also an interactive one. It'll be live streamed on social media and panelists will take questions from people on Facebook and Twitter. Hope you can join Join in. Thanks so much for watching In Focus. We appreciate you spending your Sunday with us.